Hello, my name is Abby Rapson. I first started school when I was four years old at Fidworth Church of England Primary School in the UK. I then finished this school in year six and moved to my secondary school in September of 2017. This school was the World Community School. Later on in year nine, I moved to Australia in June 2021. This is where I then joined Dacobin State High School and later graduated in 2023. I chose to enrol in the Bachelor of Primary and Secondary Education as I believe it will present a wide range of opportunities and pathways for me to not only become a teacher, but also an educator for those who may different way of learning, leading me to expand and grow my future career choice and to make an impact on young individuals. As a future teacher, I would like to consider myself to be presentable, articulate and have a good work ethic. I take pride in achieving good results in everything I do striving to improve my knowledge and skills and getting things done right the first time. I would say that I am well organised, creative and consider myself to be a good problem solver. All attributes that I believe will serve me well as a future teacher. Having been the victim of bullying at my primary school back in the UK, I am quite aware of the importance of making sure that everybody gets included in as many group activities as possible. I'm really passionate about the importance of getting a good education and one of the many reasons why I want to become a teacher is to help ensure that all children get the opportunities they deserve and that they are able to take those opportunities and place them in an inclusive and welcoming environment for others. As a future te teacher, I hope to create an all-inclusive environment for all types of students so that they are not made to feel out of place like I did as a child. In my early years of education, I struggled with my speech and pronouncing words the correct way. I still do to this day sometimes. This left me to struggle in my classes until my mum decided to take action and put me into speech therapy. She then had a meeting with all my teachers and the principal explaining the matter to them and what they needed to do to assist me in my needs. Surprisingly, they did not assist me the way they should have. This leads me to believe that every child deserves to have help so that they can thrive in their education the way they need to. After reading and analysing Nodin's chapter four, The Aims of Education, I've encountered quite a few ideas and insights about the philosophy of education. From what I have read of Nodin's paper, I strongly agree with her points. The children and students should learn knowledge and skills which will help them navigate in the real world. Typically, all teachers are required to teach from a syllabus or a set structure. A handful of these teachers will not be required to for students to navigate themselves around in the world. Nordens has addressed this in her findings, saying, The next topic is combining algebraic fractions, and one cannot easily find the appropriate common denominator without knowledge of the factoring. This shows that students are commonly learning content that they will only use to be able to learn other problems, and not in the real world. In addition to this, Nordens has also mentioned that today most textbooks are written this way. That mean in the same way that they have been written for the last 50 years. This demonstrates that the education system has not catered and changed in over half a century and does not overly adapt to those who have needs and struggles or learn in many different ways. I hope to change this by creating the environment where all students feel their way of learning is important and unique to them. Furthermore, Nordings has also pointed the question why avoid such useless talk and get on with the practical business of education, educating our children? This demonstrates that children are not ready when they leave school to face the real world. They are not only taught things that they don't need in school, but also that they will not use once they have left. Why are they taught these skills in school, especially school, considering that it's the one place where everybody is supposed to learn? After reading this article, I have evidently learned that school does not fully equip students to navigate in the real world, but are instead taught how to learn and accumulate knowledge from an individual, that individual commonly being their teacher or educator.